All right. Now, can you guys hear us now? Okay, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, good. Come on in. I ordered a case of water to the office. Just I, I food, to go eat it. food for thought. So you don't carry cases of water up. Just go on Amazon. I'll take a water. Well, yeah. Go go on Amazon and you click the Amazon button. And you can click any kind of water you want and they'll bring it right up here to the office. You don't got to carry it up. You don't have to go to the store, put it into their thing, drive it up to the thing. And so then you got to pay for it. You got to put it in your car, right? And you got to park your car over there. You got to carry it from the car and try and open up the build, open up the doors with a case of water in your hand. You can't, right? So you got to put the case of water down. You got to open up the doors, prop them open somehow. Get your case of water in, you got a order, same thing, all the way up here. I love you. I just How much click is the one case button. Of water on Amazon? I don't know. Probably like eight bucks, probably double. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. It's probably not that much more. I'll I'll find out. I'll find out. But I don't think it's that much more. Typically Amazon is is it, is it more expensive to buy stuff on Amazon? Like groceries. Yeah, I think they do that. Groceries? No, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. Well, I was yeah, I have, I have Prime, and like even that I buy Prime is like a hundred bucks cheaper. If it's like a thousand dollars, I pay a hundred dollars cheaper every time. Wow. And it's free delivery. If you have Prime, it's free delivery every time. Yeah. I mean, even if it costs the same or a little bit more, but it saved me the time, then it's cheaper. Yeah. You know? What's your time worth? Let's move this over here. So we got the participant box over there. So uh, look, you're on the big screen, man. Look who's laughing now. <laughs> I like the cool shades. <laughs> Much better. You look like you're in a movie with the shades <laughs> on. You're about to do a mafia hit or something. <laughs> with Patrice. You all know she's in the, she lives in the bottom, guys. You know, the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Bottom. Drop and down. tumble. Keep Don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Screw up with your mama down here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're the girls. We're the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyways, that's just my food for thought for today on, on getting cases of water. Now, all that carrying these cases of water these days is nonsense. Right. Uh, at my old house in Pittsburgh, we had a uh, monthly, or I think it was monthly, they would come and drop off my monthly supply of bottles of water once a month. Wow. Yeah. And it came to my, my, my uh, neighbor's house one day, and he's Indian. He don't even really speak English too well. He come over, knocked on my door, and, you know, it was interesting just to say none, nonetheless i had to go over to his house go to his garage i drove the maserati up packed up the maserati <laughs> with my water and drove back down <laughs> but but anyways um all right so uh so so today we got brand new leads last night right um well, any questions on the phones any questions on the phones any issues any questions anything you want me to go over with that that kind of stuff no um, I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble, well not in this lead pack, this lead pack is just amazing, there's just no problems with it this time, but like last week's lead pack, my wheels are just a little bit older when I was calling them, they were saying they already had this done through a lawyer, and like, you know, we always go like, you know, always give this to your family or friend, they can save, the, these are the people that can save the money, but it always seems like they're like, yeah, I still don't want this. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, mean, I, my, I mean, my first question, why the heck did they fill out the free, the free wheel kit? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. But I would tell them, you know, that the wheel kit has already been generated for them, you know, and been issued. Um, and even though it's, it, it might be free to you, someone does bear the cost, you know. And I won't just throw that right in their face, but somehow you want to let them know that, uh, you know, is that, well, I understand that. You could even somehow spin it on, and, and you know, the number one rebuttal on the phones is always, well, that's why I'm calling, Yeah. you know, right? And then you can tell them, well, that's why I'm calling. Um, 
and then tell them a lot of our uh, most people have them set up from, through through a lawyer, you know, and that's why they have the free will kit as well because it's something you can have set on your person. You can give to your you give to your friends and family. That's for your lawyer. This is for your friends and family, you know. Um, and uh, you know, my job is just to deliver these, this this benefit to you, explain to you how it all works. It's already been set up for you. It's already been issued for you. It's already been generated for you. So I just need to get the benefit out to you and answer any questions and I'll be out of your hair. And then, you know, I say, well, I don't, you know, I said, I know that, you know, it is a free, free will kit, but you know, um, it is free to you, but it is not, you know, uh, it, it, it does, does still bear a cost. Someone does still pay for it. So, so anyways, um, yeah, but those are tough ones. I mean, you really shouldn't get those that much because that's pretty much, um, I don't know, the opposite of why they, yeah. you know, it's the opposite. Why you, that don't even make no sense. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody, you know, filling out a, a thing for, you know, uh, I don't even know that, that, they, that they want milk, but they got a whole fridge of milk. Don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you tell the milkman to come and deliver you milk if you have a whole fridge of milk? I mean, if they already have it done, why are they getting a, why would you get another one, right? So I don't know how often that would really happen, mm. you know, to be honest with you. Um, so, but any other questions? Will kits, child saves, referrals, referrals. How you guys doing on referrals? It's Work in progress. Yeah. So, so the difference is, is you're just not saying the, 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 the right words at the right time, the right way. That's pretty much the difference. And Gio, he, he, he sold last week, a bunch of contingent beneficiaries, contingent beneficiaries. So easy for him. He said it was so easy. Right. So are you guys saying the, the words that he's saying is the question. What do you think? You think they're saying them? Uh, not always verbatim, but that's why we like workshop and everything to make sure we do it verbatim. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying it though, or are you, are you shying away from it? Uh, like I, I'm, I'm sitting down with two referrals today, and I have two referrals tomorrow. I think I'm saying them. Yeah. You think yeah. you're saying yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. And when you're saying it, what's happening? Uh, I was just going over this, but. <clears throat> Is it working? A lot of people, when I try to roll them at night, the referral, it's not working out when I'm trying to roll the, roll the referral at night where they just don't feel comfortable calling them so late. Yeah. But so it's harder to roll the referral the later at night it gets is what yeah, you're finding. At, at this point now, but like, if it's like during the day and like it's like six o'clock or something, they'll call them and like maybe if they answer, you know, it's good. They're going to get booked and put on, but if they're not answering, it's like, damn, I just, I just got to call them again later, but it's no problem. Yeah. I just want to have better control of bringing out how to roll the referrals. So mm -hmm. if I'm getting the referral, I just don't know how to roll them as well as I, as I could. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so the verbiage on rolling the referral, you're getting the referral, it's good. Rolling the referral from the home is, is, is great. When you leave the house, the chances of setting that referral goes down dramatically, you know? So it's kind of like food. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like that at the house. If I know we have food from like dinner three days ago, I'm like, babe, we got to heat this stuff up. It's going to go bad. You know, we don't, it's going to go bad. I got to hurry up and heat it up. If we don't heat it up and eat, eat it up. <laughs> We're not going to, it's going to go bad. So um, it's the same thing with the referral, uh, but you got to be serious to you. You got to understand it's a true thing. It's a real thing. Like if you get off that call, if you get out of that house, and you don't roll that referral and get that referral set on your schedule, the chances of you ever setting them, and then let alone seeing them, let alone selling them, goes down way dramatically. So you gotta have that sense of urgency and that, that, that just, that understanding. If nobody told me this, then I might not be as adamant to arrange my words in a way that makes sure that I get them set while I'm in the home, you know? So we have to, number one, just understand how important it is. And every second, every minute, every hour, every day that goes by without getting that referral set 
the chances of setting them just goes down and down and down and down and down, right? Um, the older they get, the colder that they get. The referral is the hottest right when you get it. So remember, when you get the referral, what you want to do is, is uh, I'll give you some words and then and some actions that we can take. You know, and if you follow through with all of them, it definitely increases your chances of getting a referral. You know, then if you skip one or another, you might miss five percent chance, ten percent before you know it. You know, might, might might not be you know getting the batting average that we want on these referrals. So um, after, and this is this is after we collected the referral, right? Okay. So if you want to know the verbiage on how to collect the referral, it's on Arius University. If you go on Arius University. I have a video called Contingent Beneficiaries. And I also have a video called VIVS. And regardless of whatever way you collect the referral, after you collect them, the same, pretty much the same verbiage will apply to getting them set. And this is all on the video as well. So, so you can check it out on there, but, but I'll kind of just touch on some of that. So, so after I, I you know, I, um, I explained to the client that, you know, right now we need to get a third and a fourth con uh, ben contingent beneficiary from you. You know, so who would you like to list as your third? Who would you like to list as your fourth? And remember when you do this, what's nice is, is you can do, if you're putting a, a policy on the husband and the policy on the wife, those are two different people. So I'll say for you, Joe, who would be your third beneficiary who would be your fourth beneficiary and I get their name and their phone number and their information then I say now Mary for you and I always repeat it too you know so I'll, it's in the video but I'll say now Mary for you you listed your husband Joe as the beneficiary and you listed your son Joe Jr. as the secondary beneficiary on your coverage now what we need to do is we need to establish your third and your fourth beneficiary so who would be your third beneficiary, Mary? And she gives me the, who would be your fourth beneficiary? And I get hers and his separately. Sometimes they might be the same exact people, right? But if you ask them separately, it could be four separate people. That means you got four contingent beneficiaries you gotta call and get on your schedule. So they say, okay, Joe, now I promise you I'll do the best I can to get over to them and make sure that they understand how this all works. But what we need to do now is we need to give your brother a call and make sure that he knows you listed him as a beneficiary and he's okay with accepting that responsibility. So let's give your brother a real quick call now. You know, and I might even say, and, uh, and then I need to make sure I get him on my schedule. So let's give him a quick call now. So we'll call his brother up. And, and typically I'll try and talk, right? So, hey, John, I'm here with your brother, Joe. I'm actually... Uh, work with him and your and, and your sister-in-law and his wife Mary. Uh, I'm, I'm their benefit representative through the child safety program, but through the police and the firefighters. And right now, um, uh, they they were able to take advantage of some exclusive benefits uh, through the, the 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 program. And some of those benefits were life insurance. And for for the uh, beneficiaries on your brother's life insurance, he actually listed you as one of the beneficiaries, John. So um, we just needed to give you a call and uh, number one, let you know that he listed you as the beneficiary. But also number two, uh, we need to make sure that you would ex you, that you're okay with accepting this responsibility because uh, John, if you accept this responsibility, then if God forbid something were to happen to your brother you may need to be the one to file a claim on the money. So is that okay? If, 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 if We just want to make sure you're okay with being listed as a beneficiary. And when he says, yes, I accept that. I say, now, if you accept that responsibility, when he says, yeah, I say, great. Since you accept that responsibility, my job is now to, to uh, get you, get you uh, what do I say? Now my job is to set up time for me to sit down with you and your wife at your kitchen table and make sure that I uh, that you have all the proper claim forms you understand how the program works and then I'll say so what we're giving you a call right now is to get you on my schedule 
I'm out in the area. I got a really booked up schedule. So we need to make sure that we just get you on my schedule real quick. Now, I'm pretty jam-packed tomorrow. I know it's still earlier in the day today. I am out in your area. Um, I do have a little bit of availability. Even this evening, I can wiggle it in and meet with you and your wife if you guys are available. If not, we would have to uh, get this set up for tomorrow. And uh, what is your, what time do you guys typically get home from work tomorrow? And, and you got to use those verbiage like we need to. I just need to make sure we get you on my schedule. Stuff like that. Um, so the phone call that you make when you're in the home, you know, if you use some of that verbiage can help land that appointment. And if you're asking instead of assuming, you might get some more pushback. Like, hey, would it be okay if we give them a call now? Well, now you're just asking, right? Instead of saying, well, what we need to do is we need to give them a call, a quick call right now and just get them on my schedule. That way, we, that way we, we won't miss them, right? Something like that. Hey, Tommy, when you're rolling referrals in the house, are you letting them know that they have access to additional insurance benefits themselves, or are you not telling them that on the phone? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, 100%. Yeah. So whenever I, I, I nail down the time with them, you know, once I nail down the time, or you could say beforehand, you know, so my job is to make sure that I sit down with you and your wife at your kitchen table to make sure you guys understand um, how your brother program works. And if something were to happen, you have all the proper claim forms. And what's nice, Joe, is um, uh, because you're sponsored into the program by your brother and you're a beneficiary, you're going to have access to the same exclusive benefits that him and his wife are able to take advantage of. And the nice thing is you don't have to be part of any of the, uh, the, the unions or any of the, the firefighters or the police. And you don't have to pay any dues at all, but you're going to get access to all those same benefits that they get access to with all the same discounted rates as well. So I'll go over that when I'm all, all out there answering questions for you and your wife as well. Uh, you know, and, and, and you could let them know right when you book the appointment, like right when you're saying, hey, um, you know, I need to make sure I sit down with you and your wife so that, you know, you have the proper claim forms, you understand how all this all works. And also you get access to these exclusive benefits. So um, I have time this evening or I can set you up for tomorrow and you go into to picking the time. Or if, if you forget or something, you just tell them, hey, because you're on the phone with them. And so, so you might say, uh, so I need to set up time to get out to you and, your, you and your wife to sit down with you at your kitchen table to make sure you guys have um, proper claim forms. God forbid something were to happen, you need to have the claim forms and also you understand how this all works. What time do you guys get home? Uh, they would say between four and five. So, okay, great. So tomorrow between four and five, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get you right into my schedule. It actually works out perfect. And I'll be able to sit down with you and your wife and go over all these things. And what's nice, Joe, is that since your brother um, sponsored you into the program and since you are a beneficiary, you're going to have access to all the same exclusive benefits that typically are for the policemen, firefighters, teachers, and all the other organizations that you typically have to be exclusively part of and, and you have to pay dues to have access to these. You're going to have access to those exclusive benefits. And if, you, if, if it makes sense for you, you even be able to take advantage of them at all the discounted rates as well. But I'll go over that all when, when I'm out there with you, uh, you know, and I'll answer all your questions as well. And then I'll be able to get out of your hair. You guys will be good to go. Sound good? Right? Something like that. So either way, you just want to definitely make sure on the phone call, though, that you let them know. You know, you don't want to get into there and they think that you're just dropping up some um, claim forms. And then you go into this whole pitch or something and they're like, what the heck? And then they call your brother and they're mad. Right? So... Uh, but yeah, um, good question. Good question. Cause when I first went over, I didn't even mention that. Well, yeah, we got Marvin. Uh, so what about if they say, oh yeah, they don't have any, they already have insurance. They won't need anything additional. Like you bring up the, yeah, there's a need analysis, but. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 what do I say? I'll say that's great. I mean, there's really nothing. I won't even say nothing about it. Kind of ignore it. Yeah, I still got to sit down and drop off the claim forms. Who says that? The, the people on the phone or your, or the referee? The, the people. Referee. Are, so, so you're sitting down with Joe. Joe referred his brother, right? And this is contingent beneficiary. He said, well, they don't need no additional benefits. I said, okay, great. No problem. Yeah, yeah. And then they call the, the referral and they said the same thing. They're like, we'll, we'll really have insurance. Okay, perfect. No problem. 
and you just keep on going and set okay. the appointment and go sit down with them. Right. You know what I mean? Because they don't know nothing. They, 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 I, I sat down with people, like, oh, we already got insurance. And I went and sat down with them, and they did already have insurance. It was car insurance. <laughs> you understand? They don't know what they're talking about, right? So until the doctor checks them out and gives them the A O K, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe whatever they're telling me, right? Oh yeah, I mean the guy's overweight. He's overweight, coughs, right? Smokes cigarettes. I'm 100 percent healthy. Healthy as an ox. What do you think a doctor would say to that? You're lying. Let me check you out first, right? Doctor ain't gonna be buying what the patient's telling them, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so don't believe it, man. They, they don't know what they're talking about. It literally happened to me multiple times. On multiple times, they told me they had insurance, and then when I checked it out, it was like not life insurance. It was some other type of insurance. And But one of them actually thought it was life insurance. And then we looked at it, and it was like some like uh, critical illness plan or something that he had through work. You know, and there was no life insurance attached to it at all. So, and then, you know, remember, there's, there's three things you're going to run into in, in, in 90, over 90% of the time, over 90% of the time, you're going to find that they're either going to be uninsured, um, underinsured, or improperly insured. Sometimes you can be underinsured and improperly insured, like this. You got $10,000 of, of, of group term coverage through work. That's not the right amount or the right type, right? So you're underinsured and improperly insured. Maybe we'll put that up. So, okay. Um, so why would somebody be uninsured? Because they're uneducated. Why would someone be underinsured? They're undereducated. Why would someone be improperly insured? They're improperly educated. They think that having $200,000 of group term coverage is the right type and the right amount for them. But 200,000 was just the, the, the package that you could get from work. You could get 50, 100, and 200. There's no needs analysis done, you know, like where they come up with 200,000. So, um, so we got to remember that when we're meeting with our clients, you have to just know that going in that 90% of the people are going to be falling into one of those three categories and some of them will fall into two of them at a time. So that's why we got to be good at pre beating the rebuttals, pre beating the rebuttals. So making sure that we establish, and what's nice is when they tell you. So if I say to the client, you know, you know, uh, your president, John Smith, contracted through our company to work with, you know, uh, your organization to make sure all the members have guaranteed permanent benefits. The problem and concern that they're running into is that whenever somebody leaves their organization, you know, because when you work for a company, Joe and Mary, what they found is most people have benefits from their employer. You know, you know, how, you know how companies give benefits to their employees, right? Well, what typically happens to those benefits whenever you leave that company? For any reason, let's say, I mean, you quit, you fired, retire, what typically happens to those benefits? That's right, Joe and Mary, they go away. That was one of the biggest problems and concerns that they've been running into. So that's why um, your president was uh, I mean John Smith, but also all the other, we work with over 30,000, almost 40,000 different unions and all the presidents and organization leaders of those organizations as well have all worked with our company to make sure that now all their members have guaranteed permanent benefits in place. Does that make sense, Joe and Mary? So, so another way you could bring that up would be is, is I'm not sure if you're aware um, do you guys have a handbook for your benefits for your organization? Did they give you a handbook for your benefits? No? Well, um, for your organization, I went ahead and checked. Okay, and here's the handbook. And if you can get your hands on the handbook, or if you can go on to 
your, um, uh, when you click the lead, you can get lead info. If you could go right in there and find out, it might even say on there. Yeah, some of them have coverage through different companies to come. But like sometimes they'll say like, does this coverage cover retirees? And they'll say yes, but only if they're vested. Yes, see? Sometimes it'll say that and you have to know what that means, yeah. right? And then, and then sometimes it says no, Yeah. right? So if you can literally pull up a sheet and say, so have you guys checked your handbook? Okay, well, you know, what I did is I, you know, I work with so many different members in your organization specifically. I've been servicing the service employees for the last few months now specifically. And, and one thing is, is in your handbook, if you look at this little printout here, um, what happens when you retire from here? So whenever you quit, get fired, and when you retire, what does it say right there for retirees? What happens to the benefits? Um, Joe, can you read that? What's that say? What's it say? They go away? Yeah. Excuse me? They go away. They, they go away. That's what it says. Mary, did, did you see that? Did you guys, were you guys aware of that? So that was one of the biggest problems and concerns they've been running into. Joe, Joe, how does that make you feel? Mary, Mary, how does that make you feel knowing that you're going to lose all the benefits whenever we retire? And whenever she goes, you go, excuse me? Okay. Right. So that's why they have us out here. Um, it showed that you didn't have any of your American income benefit paperwork filled out. Uh, I didn't see anything in the system for you. So we could get that taken care of for you today. So if everything makes sense, I'll make sure you answer all your questions. This is your service period today while we're out here. So I'll make sure you answer all of your questions while we're out here as well. And we'll get you guys squared away. All right? So that's a great way to, to smash work insurance and tell them, in fact, do you have work insurance? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. If every company gave all of their employees permanent benefits that would last them their lifetime, our company would not be in business, right? The reason we're in business is because all these companies out there, they, some of them, most of them provide benefits to their employees. But the problem is, is when you leave that company, quick, get fired, retire, what happens to those benefits? They go away. And then you pull it up and you show them here specifically for your handbook. When, do you think she read the handbook? Do you think he read the handbook? So you go in there like the boss. I mean, this guy knows more about my benefits than we do, right? So, and, and then the, the work insurance that you guys have, yeah, that's good. That's the reason why we're here. That's why we're here, <laughs> you know? So they're never gonna give you a rebuttal of, oh, I don't need this because I have coverage through work. You should never get that. They pretty much told you I said, what happens whenever you quit, get fired, or retire, Joe? What happens to your benefits? And guess what Joe tells me? Joe told me they go away. That's the best form of sales, Marv. If you can get the client to tell you versus you telling the client. I can tell the client. Easy. Watch this. Ready? Hey, uh, right. You know whenever you quit, get fired, or retire, you lose all of your benefits. So while you're here, you might have the benefits. But, but whenever you leave, it doesn't matter, all the employees, they lose their benefits whenever they quit. See, I told him, or I could phrase it in a way to where I'm telling him, but I'm asking him a question, but it's a loaded question. I know what he's going to tell me. You know, I'm not going to get caught in some sort of like conundrum where he doesn't give me the answer I want, right? So I say, Joe, you know how most companies provide benefits to their employees, right? Right? Yeah. Well, well, what typically happens to those benefits whenever you leave that company? They go away. Let's let's say you quit, you get fired, or you retire. What typically happens to those benefits? They, they go away. They go away, right? Right. And and were you aware of that, Mary? Not really. She said not not not. She said not not really. Okay. Well, how does that make you feel knowing that you're going to lose all your benefits whenever you retire? Insecure. Excuse me. Insecure. 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 Um, that makes sense, right? And a lot of members have felt the same exact way, and that's why they contract through our company, because boom, we provide you guys with guaranteed permanent coverage. In fact, I, we, they actually showed me the manual, and for your benefits, you can even see right here, what's it say for you when, well, for the retirees? All retiree benefits, they go away after 30 days, whatever it says. You want to read that there? Okay, great, I make them read it, and I ask them, so how does that make you feel? Again, I ask them to them again, right? 
And you could always hit them with the, excuse me, after they tell it, because now they got to repeat it. No, it doesn't make me feel too good. Excuse me? It doesn't make me feel good at all. You know, it's like they got to repeat that. It really can get them. So, so that's right at the beginning, man. And it's educational. It's great. They appreciate that. So, um, and most of them should know that. They kind of know that, but it was never really discussed on an open forum ever. It's just kind of something that they kind of knew, kind of thought they knew. Yes, question. So I sat with this one laborer once and he said, well, they told me as long as I keep paying my union dues, I have coverage for the rest of my life. When I was telling him, those, like they go away, he's like, no, they don't. That's why you got to have that sheet there. Yeah. Yeah. The group info sheet. The group info sheet. Yeah, it said he only had ADB. It didn't say anything else. Like, yeah, you should be so Yeah, I think it was just in denial. Like, because he's like, no, I, I was told that I had coverage for the rest of my life. Yeah, I would, I would do the research and help the guy out. You know, that's a situation where you can, um, you know, take that extra step, be that professional, and be like, man, if I don't go help this dude, like, he's in some crazy la-la land, and when he dies, his family's going to be highly upset because what he thinks is true is not true. Then you do the research, and you find out either A, he was, fault, he was gravely mistaken, or B, maybe he was some truth to what he was saying. Right? And now you're educated, so when you talk to the other members, you could tell them, but you also know how to complement that. You know, sometimes you can tell the client, you know, you know, our, our job, if you have benefits, well, that's great, you know, and we're not here to replace or cancel or do anything, but what, we, what, what our company's able to do is really help complement any benefit you already have in place. You know, we don't want to compete with, but we can complement. We don't need to compete with, but we can complement. That's just something you can say if you ever get to situation how do you beat uh somebody that they uh they don't believe in whole life like they like term rather invest the money elsewhere like an index fund or something sure and they're pretty certain that their like pension will be good for them and then you know the spouse gets like 50 percent for me pension if they die yeah 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 so that's a by term invest the difference question right yeah. so he said how do you beat someone who um, believes in by term invest the difference. So what's interesting is my dad worked for Primerica and that's what Primerica does. They say, all right, look, it's, instead of getting 200 bucks and putting it into a whole life policy, take 50 bucks and put it into a term policy. Take the other 150 bucks and put it into an IRA, you know, and invest it into like an index annuity or something or an indexed fund or something like that. That's the philosophy. So the thing is, though, is um, what they found is a lot of people, they'll buy the term, and they won't buy the term. They'll get sold the term. So you're supposed to buy term and invest the difference. But what happens is they don't buy the term. They end up getting sold the term, and then they never invest the difference. And the people that do actually invest the difference, ask them how their portfolio is doing right now. And the people that actually did invest the difference, and they 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 um that's the and they and they actually kept it in there for ten or twenty years. Yeah, look how their portfolio is doing right now. Just got cut in half or whatever. And then the people that put money into their portfolios, most of them, life happened. Life happened. So they either stopped putting the money in because they couldn't keep up with that, or they put the money in and then their kid had to go to college. The car broke down, major tragedy, house, something happened. Before you know it, boom, it was tapped into and gone. So, so most people did get sold the term, but a lot of people didn't really have much success on investing the difference. Maybe one out of 10. So that's the problem with that system and philosophy. And at the end of the day, they barely had any investment and they had no life insurance. And when they passed away, the, their family, you know what their family got? Yeah. The only little bit of money that they had left in those investments, right? Here's the thing is, is, is you know, it's not a matter of if, but when. So term insurance is for the if, 
whole life is for the when. So you got to think, it's not a matter of if we pass away, but, but when we pass away. And if we want to properly protect from when we pass away, that's what whole life coverage is built for. Because, you know, if, um, if, if, if I put $100 a month away into this investment, and four months from now I pass away, my family's going to have 400 bucks cash. If I put $100 a month into this whole life policy and I pass away four months from now, my family will have $100,000 cash. $400 or $100,000, right? It's, it's called an aleatory contract versus dollar for dollar. When you put money into investments, it's dollar for dollar. So here's the worst thing is now you're self-insured. Who wants to be self-insured? That means you saved up all your money. And then when you died, it went to your family to, um, to, to pay off debts and all that kind of stuff. Your money should go to your family so they can live life. And, you, and that's why they have life insurance. Investments are investments. Life insurance is life insurance. Your life insurance is not an investment. And your investment is not life insurance. Retirement and money is for retirement. Life insurance is for life insurance. Life insurance is not for retirement, right? Retirement is not for life insurance. Same thing. And that's where some people try and you know maybe you know get around the system or something, but it never works. So um, So buy term invest the difference or you know investing money it's it's the same thing as this it's it's um uh you owe twenty thousand dollars on your car payments are four hundred dollars a month interest rates low right you got twenty thousand dollars in your bank account what do you do good down payment build credit you owe twenty thousand on your car right now. You guys all own a car, right? Imagine you owe twenty grand. Your payments are four hundred dollars a month. Do you go out and, and work, run the system here, and you know by the end of the month you make uh, you know make an extra twenty thousand dollars. So now you got twenty thousand dollars. You're like, hey, mom, dad, cousin, brother, aunt, uncle. Hey, guys, I have got an extra twenty grand. I owe 20 grand on my car. What should I do? Pay it off. Should I pay it off? Not all of it. Should I pay to pay it off? If I pay it off, I'll free up what? Interest. You'll free up $400 a month. I'll free up $400 a month, right? You think I should do that? Yeah. Yeah? Either way, you're going to be up. Saving more afterwards, no. I don't think you should do that. I don't think you All right, check it out. Check it out. Here's, here's what happens. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's pay off. Let's pay off the car, guys. We pay off the car, right? Now I own a car, you know, but I have no money. All my money's gone. Something happens to me. I need money. What do I do? Chrysler, Chrysler, Chrysler got all my money. Chrysler got all my money. Right? Think they're going to give me the money back? Guess what? I'm screwed. Right? Option B, why don't I keep my 20 grand in the bank and just give them $400 a month? <laughs> you kidding me? That makes sense? Yeah. It's the same 20 grand. You're going to be out 20 grand, gone, save you $400 a month that you were paying with the 20 grand anyways. What are you worried about $400 a month? It's paid for. You got the 20 grand. Keep the 20 grand, give them $400 a month and tell Chrysler to, to chill out. You'll get the money when you get it. Right? I still get the car too, don't I? I get it all. I get the money in the car. This is why people go broke, because they don't understand how to manage their money. I had a guy who was 40-some years old, a wife and kids. You'd think he would know what the hell he's doing by now in life. 
he comes to me, Tommy, can I borrow some money? I said, no, I'll borrow money from me. 40 years old and you're broke, you think I'm gonna get the money back off of this guy? It's not like you had some brilliant idea he was gonna make the money back. He just wanted to borrow money. I said, no. He said, all right, how about this? I'll give you my car notes. I'm like, you have cars paid off? He's like, yeah, I got this BMW. It's my dream car. I got this BMW paid it off, right? Then I always wanted this old Monte Carlo or whatever. So I got this Monte Carlo and paid it off. I'm like, well, how, how'd you pay it off? He's like, well, a couple years ago, my old job, I made all kind of extra money. I made like an extra 60 grand and I had it in the bank account. And I said, I'm going to pay these cars off. So my dude had like an extra 60 grand, him and his family. He paid off his cars. Now that's how much money he got. No money, and he got two pieces of metal in there. He can't even put gas in the freaking thing. What kind of sense does that make? Why didn't he call me and ask me what to do or ask somebody with a freaking brain in their head before making these financial decisions? Because people go like this. Ugh. No humbleness. People don't got no humbleness to ask questions. They're they're horrible. They're not. They're getting no results in life. But they're just don't ask nobody no questions. I know what I'm going to do with this money. How'd you figure that one out, Bub? Where'd you get this information from? Maybe you should have called somebody who has a bunch of money and asked them what you should do with the little bit of money. So he took advice from nobody. Just came up with this idea. What if I paid my cars off? And now three years later, he's asking him to borrow money for me. I said, no, if you want money, sell your car, sell your car. And after you sell your car, sell all your other shit. And when you sell all your shit and you go into debt and you are accredited out and you can't get no money from anybody else, you can come see me because now I know you're serious. He has two cars he wants to borrow my money. You out of your mind? That's not what Shark Tank's about. Like if I was on Shark Tank and you brought your shit to me, say, Tommy, if you give me $250,000, I'll give you 25% of my company. I'm like, okay. Why do you need my money? I said, because because if I can get your money, then I can buy more uh, machines, and I can make more products, and we can scale our business out and do a whole launch, blah 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 blah. And instead of my business doing a million dollars a year, it could go to five million dollars a year. So I'd rather give, I'd rather own seventy-five percent of a five million dollar a year company rather than 100% of a million dollar company. So that's why I want to partner with you. Okay, all right. Well, why don't you just put your 250,000 into the business then? Why do you want to put my, risk my money if you're so confident on it? Why don't you just take your 250 and put it into the business? You already did. If he said, cause I want to use your money. I got money, but I don't use, I said, no way. You ain't all in bro, you ain't all in. I'm not putting my money in with you. You ain't all in. Unless that guy put all his money in and all his mom's money and then all his credit, and then he racked up credit cards, don't have no more debt. No one will give him a credit. He mortgaged out his house, borrowed every money he possibly could. He had no money left. He's like, I'm all in, babe. I know where this is going. I put everything I have into my business. And, I, and I, I'll be here. I'll rock where I'm at. But if I can partner with you, now I'm like, okay, I can mess with this guy, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that that that's where we got to be. I don't even know why I got talk, talking about that. Why are we talking about that again? We talking about something else before that. Management. Management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it's gotten a little bit off money management, but but so the cars is 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 the thing we were talking about, right? So that's the whole idea. Is is um, if the guy goes like this, he's like, I have a hundred thousand dollars. If I pass away, that'll just go to my family. Say, so, okay. But now you just have a hundred thousand dollars. It goes to your family, right? This way, 
this way. This way, if you pass, when you pass away, what the heck was I going to say? I got, I got, I got my head wrapped around a whole nother idea, which I'm going to go to in one second. Okay. But, but instead of having like this, instead of having a, a, a car, but not $20,000, wouldn't it be nice to have a car at 20,000? Right. So instead of giving your, your family a hundred thousand dollars to pay for all the shit, why don't you give the, the life insurance will pay for all the shit and then you give your family a hundred thousand dollars. So how about this? The guy got a hundred thousand dollars, right? What is the interest rate on this? What's what's you invest this money, Ash, you got a hundred grand you invest it. What, what's your interest rate? What's your interest rate? 5%. Maybe, maybe you can get a good 5%. All right, we're going to break on this here in three minutes, okay? Um, you get a 5% interest rate. What's 5% of 100000 5000 which is how many dollars a month? $400 a month, right? $4,800 a month is $400 a month, right? So, so it's uh, $416 a month or something, $417 a month, okay? All right, so here's the question now, okay? is how much would a $100,000 whole life policy be for this person? Would it be less than $400 a month? Yeah. How old are they? I don't know. That's the thing, right? So we got to figure that out. But, but let's just say it's, it's, it's 400 or less. So, so here's the deal. It's, it's right now, when you pass away, you got $100,000. And when you pass away, what's your family going to get? The $100,000, right? This way, now when you pass away, your family's gonna get $100,000 cash plus $100,000 of life insurance tax-free, okay? And what did it cost you? It cost you nothing. Yeah, I just showed you how to double your money. You're gonna take the interest that you make over here, use that interest to pay for the policy here, and now if you pass away tomorrow, guess what your family gets? 200. 200. Yesterday, before you met me, when you passed away, what did your family get? Now, the day after you meet me, one day later, what did we do? We just doubled it. And what did it cost you? Nothing. Didn't it cost you nothing? You're out of your monthly income right now. You got monthly flow. What you still could buy all the milk, eggs, and bread you want. Go to eat. Go to dinner. Go to all the TV, movie shows, dinners, whatever you want. Buy more Christmas gifts. This is not messing with your cash flow at all, right? Think about that. That's what that's what I'm trying to talk about when when they want to do buy term invest the difference. You know, people who have all that money and they say I don't need insurance because I got a hundred grand. Okay, well let me show you this. It's the same thing as like why would you not pay your car off? Same reason why you don't pay your car off. Same reason, you know. So, so you, you use different things like option A, option B. Option A, you pass away, your family gets 100000 Option B, you pass away, your family gets 100000 plus they get $100,000 tax-free. Which option would you rather go with, Mary? <laughs> you know? So you keep it pretty simple for them, too. So hopefully that helps a little bit. But uh, we definitely got a break, guys. Uh, good questions today. This is what I like, bringing questions so we can – you know, work through these. Sometimes to get your answers, it's not just like you call, hey, here's the problem, here's the answer. Sometimes it's, hey, here's the problem, and then let's talk about it and figure it out. And after five or 10 minutes, we actually come up with the answer. You know, sometimes we gotta talk and discuss and talk, you gotta talk, talk out the problems. You know, talk the problems out loud and work them out out loud sometimes with somebody else, you know, as well, who's there to bounce ideas off you, you know, so someone who probably would have wisdom in that matter, if you have a problem, you and that person talking out loud about it, you know, so if you call somebody for, for, uh, for wisdom, it's like your, your, your dad or whoever, you know, your, your coach, you know, sometimes they not might just have the answer. It's not like, oh yeah, boom, that's what it is. Okay, great. See you later. It might be, well, let's talk about this a little bit more to, to, to get it down. So anyways, uh, good job today, guys. Um, let's kick off this week strong. Talk to you later.